what could be more Christmassy than, well, me wearing tinsel or making very pretty, very tinkly fabric bells. So here's a Christmassy one and here's one just out of standard fabric. If you'd like to make these, I've got a full tutorial coming up. I am Kim, this is Quilt with Kim. You're very welcome here. Let's move on and get stitching and before you know it, you'll have a whole bevy of these bells for you. What you're going to need then is some fabric, obviously. So I've got some holly leaf Christmas fabric here with some coordinating green. That's just a fat quarter of each of those. So get some fabric and give it a good iron. The bell that I have just shown you was made out of um, a scrap of an old party dress that my daughter had when she was about three. She is now 17 and very much outgrown it. So if you've got fabric kicking around from old party dresses or old shirts, that'll do too. You don't need to go rushing out to buy new fabric if you don't want to, or if money is tight. So um, some fabric, you don't need very much because you need a plate. And this side plate is about seven and a half inches across or 19 centimeters, depending whether you're old money or new money. So it's quite a small side plate. I wouldn't go too much smaller because it gets a bit fiddly, but you can go larger if you like. It just alters the size of your finished bell. You need, obviously you need some tinkly, <laughs> tinkly bells. Uh, so these you can get in all manner of colours from um, all the usual places, Amazon, eBay and craft stores. Uh, these ones are 15 mils across, 15 millimetres across. Um, you can get smaller ones, they're just a bit fiddly to thread and I like to make life easy. And they get a good tinkle at this size. So some of those. You need some twine of some description. This is sparkly... Christmassy twine that I got off Amazon. It's really cheap to buy, but again, craft stores, Amazon, eBay, all those kind of places, or your local supermarket where they sell all the Christmas wrapping twine, that'll do too. Stranded cotton or even string, no problem using that. You're going to need um, a pencil or a white fabric marker. If you've got dark fabric, I would use a white fabric marker because you need to be able to see your line to cut out. You need a pair of scissors and you need some hand sewing needles and some coordinating thread to go with your fabric. So with all that, let's get on and get cutting out and stitching. Okay, so the first thing is we need to create two circles. So we get the wrong side of our fabric. And by the way, if you've got a plain fabric like this one, also known as a solid, it is dyed all the way through. So there is no right side or wrong side. You'll see it's the same color. So it doesn't matter which side, but on a printed fabric, there is definitely a wrong side of the fabric. So on your wrong sides of your fabric, you get your plate and we are going to draw round that plate and we need one circle out of one of your fabrics and one circle out of the other um, fabric. So we're just going to draw around the plate and cut those out. So you end up with two beautifully cut out circles. And actually on these bells, you need to pay a little bit of attention to how you're cutting those circles out. So try and make them as accurate as you can. If you watch my tutorial on how to make the folded fabric Christmas tree, and if you haven't, where were you? Check out the description below and I'll put the link in there for you. But in that, in making the Christmas tree in that video, you could be a bit rough and ready cutting out those circles because the Christmas trees hid a multitude of sins. But with our bells here, we want to be a bit more accurate on our circles. So spend a bit of time cutting those circles out. Once you've done that, put them right sides together and then you want to pop some pins in just so they don't move around when you are stitching them together. And if you put a little pin in horizontally or lying parallel to the edge of your fabric, that'll remind you that you need to leave a gap. <laughs> when you're stitching round. So if you put some pins in and then we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to stitch that together. 
Okay, my machine is all threaded up and ready to go. We are going to be stitching with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you don't know how to find your quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'll pop a couple of videos in the description below of where you can find out how to adjust your seam allowance. But we are going to be starting, do you remember where we put a little horizontal pin to remind us to leave a gap? That's really important. So we're going to be starting just one side of that. And we're going to be putting our foot very carefully down along the edge of the fabric. We're going to drop our needle. We're going to start with a lock stitch. So that's when we go forwards, backwards and forwards. And then we are going to carefully stitch all the way around this circle, keeping nice and close to the edge with our fabric here so we keep an even seam allowance. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you around at the other end. So we're just coming up to the other side of the horizontal pin. Let's get the last pin out. And we're going to stop and leave a gap of about two and a half, three inches. Give or take just enough that we can turn it all through and we're going to finish with a lock stitch. So here's our finished circle. This is the gap at the top and then we're going to turn it the right way round. Making sure that you get your fingers in the seams to really push those seams out because we want a nice curve going all the way around okay so a little bit of teasing the edges out they do pop in a little bit they like to pop back so don't worry too much we can just tease them back out again okay and once we've teased all the edges out and we've got a nice circle we're going to give that a good press to make sure we've got nice crisp edges and if you can see any flat bits here then we need to get our fingers in and push them out so we want a nice curve all the way around but i think that is looking pretty okay and when we get to this bit, the gap at the top, we're simply going to flip it down. So that quarter of an inch seam, we're going to tuck that in and give that a press. It will need a bit of fiddling and watch your fingers because you will get in the way of the iron. Let's do the other side as well. When you're doing this it will feel like it wants to go straight so you need to have a little bit of a fiddle to get it all curved and i'm just going to put my scissors in the flat of my scissors just to try and push these edges out some more Okay, so having got that all nice and flat, we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge here. So you can use any thread you like. You can use a coordinating thread so it really shows on the edge of your belt. You can use a metallic glittery thread if you like. That's what I'm going to do. If you're going to use a metallic thread, make sure you use a metallic needle. There's special needles with wide eyes for your metallic thread, but it can really give a bit of bling if you use that. So I'm going to get my machine set up and I'll meet you back over there for the top stitching. For top stitching, we want to be under a quarter of an inch, quite close to the edge. So what I do is I line up the edge of the fabric to um, the inside of this plasticky bit on the foot and line it up there with my needle still in its quarter of an inch position. Um, if that sounds a bit too complicated, we're just trying to get about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. It's not essential that you're exactly an eighth of an inch, it just gets close to the edge as you can, about of an eighth of an inch away. So I'm going to drop my 
foot and drop my needle. This time I'm not going to top stitch because we can get a little bird's nest when we're top stitching and we don't want it to show on the outside of our fabric. So what I'm going to do is go all the way around and then sew back over my initial stitch line. So let's get going on that one. Can you see how my fabric here is lining up to the edge of this perspex bit between the, the perspex or the plastic and the metal bit of my foot? Okay, now so I'm coming up to the beginning of the stitch line again. So I'm going to snip off the beginning of the thread because we don't want that caught. And I'm literally just going to stitch over the stitch line carefully and then that will lock it into place. Okay, and put a couple of back stitches in. And that will be done there. Okay, so we've got really pretty glittery metallic thread all the way around. So let's take this and turn it into a bell. So having top stitch then, we need our twine and we need our little bell. You need to make a quick decision about which of your fabrics you want on the inside of your bell and which on the outside. So I'm going to keep the red on the outside and the green on the inside. I've chosen a red bell for that, but you can have any color you choose. You need your um, twine, whatever it is. And then through the little hole at the top of the bell there can you see there's a little hole just at the top there we're going to thread our twine through and then this is really up to you but what we're aiming for is our bell to finish about here on your your circle and then you want to decide how long you want the hanging loop to be so if I've got my bell down here so that's about I don't know three quarters of an inch up it doesn't have to be exact but it needs to be around there it's further down than you think so we need all of this amount here and then we need an amount of twine let's get that more in camera amount of twine more at the top so that you can hang it so it just depends where you are going to hang it as to how long you want this section to be here but I've got about five inches at the top there so I am going to snip at that point let's move the twine out of the way and then I'm going to get my two ends and just put a knot into it so this top end will be your hanging loop Okay, so that's that bit, that bit at the end. Now you want to get your machine threaded up for the next bit and your the colour of your thread, you need to um, have your thread the same colour as the outside of your bell. So I've got my machine ready, I've got a red thread ready to go and if you were using metallic thread to do your top stitching don't forget that you need to switch back to a normal needle to do this next little bit so let's get over to my machine okay to stitch this if you have got any sort of dodgy bits going on like here where the um the gap was closed and you want to hide that bit now is your chance so I'm going to put that over on my right hand side. If you're left-handed, swap this over. I'm going to put my bell in position down at the other side of my circle. And I'm going to have my cord on my twine going up over that little dodgy bit. If you haven't got any dodgy bits, don't worry, you're just going across the circle like that in the middle. I'm going to put those two bits of twine together and I'm going to fold over this top half and wrap it over that bit of twine there okay so can you see how that looks thus far I'm holding it because I want to keep those two bits of twine together and then I'm going to get this bottom piece and wrap it the other way so that it has a nice curve on it and it matches 
along this top edge here. So let me just do that again for you. So I'm holding this twine together at the top. My bell is towards the bottom. Okay, so if I pull that, that's a bit far actually, it's moved. So let's get that more into position. I'm going to pull this top edge down to really wrap that twine within the fold there. That is about, I don't know, about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters away, I guess. You can always have a fiddle with this and then get the bottom section and pull that up. So you're wrapping the cord or the twine in that fold there. Can you see you've got a nice bell shape forming? Okay, we've nearly finished, but there is another stage to go over here. So we're going to take this, keep hold of it because it will ping apart whilst you're doing the next bit. So you kind of need three hands for this, but hold on to it and let's get to the machine. Okay, magic of pausing my recording so I can move everything. I haven't actually let go of this whilst I was pausing the video and moving my machine into position. So what I'm going to do is sew across this section to hold this twine into place. So it's really important that we're holding this together whilst we're doing all of this. Now, just a couple of little technical things. I have put my needle in the central position that just keeps it far easier for you. Um, so if you adjust your stitch width to 3.5, that will put your needle in the central position, just depending on your machine. And I've dropped my stitch length down to two because we really want to make sure that we've, we've captured this this twine in our stitching. Okay, so I'm going to move that into position. I want to start with a little lock stitch. How far is that down? That's about centimetre and a half, two centimetres, just enough so that I can capture all of this um, into position. So let me drop the needle and it will do a little lock stitch and go over to other side and I'm going to finish with a lock stitch okay and if I give that a bit of a tug that should feel nice and secure in there you're not quite done yet so we've got another section to go which will just give your bell a beautiful finish so let's go off and do that so our very final bit then, just to close it and finish it properly, is to slip stitch this little gap closed because otherwise it flaps open. So reading glasses and we need needle and thread threaded up. What you want to be careful is that it doesn't bunch back up that way, which is quite easy to do. So you want to be holding both um, halves of your fabric and give it a little tug and hold it taut and pinch it from your fingers within the bell and your thumb on top of the bell and just make sure that nothing is caught up and then always simply going to hide our stitches in this little gap here and stitch all the way down And here are your very finished, very tinkly, very pretty fabric bells. Perfect for adorning any Christmas tree. Aren't they great? Have fun making those and I will see you next time. Bye for now.